So not long ago, I made a short called How to Make Titans Suffer, and I even opened the video by saying I hate Titans, which is still kind of true, but today we're going to flip the script and show Titans a little love with a build that makes your barricade a weapon of devastation. Well, well, well. How the turntables... So today we're gonna walk through this build I've named Dead Kepri. That's real bad. Um, ride the wave. Kepri's messenger, that's better. Probably not too hard to see where this one's going. Kepri's horn and dead messenger go together just perfectly to create the right amount of calculated chaos. And with a little practice, you can actually destroy people with this combo. I'll run through the basics of the build, how you can maximize the uptime, and then some other analysis. Let's start by taking a look at the perk description for Kepri's horn. Solar damage kills recharge your barricade, which unleashes a blast of solar energy when summoned. I push the sun, and I can push you too. What a mad lad. So anytime you summon your barricade, you'll send out a fiery wave, a lot like a wave from grenade launcher, but a little bit slower. This will work for both types of barricades, so if you want to run rally barricade for faster regen, you can certainly do that. So each time this solar wave makes contact, it'll deal around 100 damage to your opponent. Your barricade will actually have two chances to deal damage as well. As it reaches its max distance, it'll actually return to your barricade and deal another round of damage if it didn't hit any geometry before reaching full length. So there's a potential to get a kill with just your barricade, although that is kind of rare. Sometimes if a guardian is right at the apex of the solar wave, it will deal double damage because it turns around right as it hits them the first time. Now at first glance, you might say that 100 damage isn't very good, and in a way, you're right, but that's where the rest of the build comes in. Dead Messenger currently deals about 130 damage, and that's enough to finish off a guardian after hitting them with the barrier solar wave. So in some cases, what you're able to do is deploy your shield, tag your enemy with the solar wave, and then jump right up over your rally barricade and fire off Dead Messenger to clean up the kill. It's kind of a weird sequence, but it can be surprisingly effective when holding down a lane and you know which ones I'm talking about as soon as you start playing a map. It's those lanes that people gravitate towards, whether it's that conflux near the moving stairs on Eternity or the center hallway or the lower side passages on Wormhaven. Those are the kind of hallways where Kepri's horn excels. You don't want to lead off an engagement with deploying your shield, it just leaves you exposed for way too long. You have to preempt your engagement and predict your enemy stepping into that lane and then deploy your barrier. Ideally, you want your solar wave meeting them right as they step into the lane, so your enemy is already one shot or close to it by the time you're exchanging fire. People just aren't expecting it. You don't see Kepri's horn getting used that much, but it really can be a force if you use it thoughtfully and carefully, and I imagine there really aren't many worse feelings for your opponent than getting cooked by Kepri's horn. Not in 2023 anyways. You're not going to hear people crying about this one in the Bungie forums. Now coming back around to the weapons for this build, for most of this footage you're going to see me using Disparity, and that also works really well since it's high damage per burst. So oftentimes you can finish off an opponent in just one burst. As far as I'm concerned with the Dead Messenger nerf, it's not a huge deal because there are other really good options in that slot like Explosive Personality. Explosive Personality is another wafering grenade launcher that really excels in Crucible with a nice roll like auto loading holster and disruption break so your primary deals more damage after you break an opponent's shield. Either way the principle is really the same. You can really control your environment with a wave frame grenade launcher and the barrier being both a roadblock to your opponent and now another offensive tool for you to work with is really handy. Now before I continue I just want to say I'm not saying Kepri's horn is going to elevate you to a 5.0 KD every match when you've been going 1.0 and I'm not saying that you're going to be stomping people and winning flawless tickets every day of the weekend. You still have to be smart with this exotic. It's high risk, high reward and if you get too aggressive with it you might find it doing more harm than good but personally i found it surprisingly fun uh, we we don't do that here yep I mean, um, this exotic really over delivered beyond my expectations. It can be a really good counter for teams that rush together as you can see in this clip here. I didn't even come close to winning this game, but a couple times here Kepri's horn paid off big time. The barrier itself and well time damage from Kepri's horn can also be a really nice team asset as well. In the end, I just think Kepri's horn is a fun way to mix up the way you play Titan a little bit. You're still using barriers, but it's just a little bit different now. It's more aggressive and tactical than it is passive. So now that we've run through the build and how to use it, let's look at the mods you'll be using to match maximize your uptime. Now I know the description for Kepri's horn repeats solar a lot, but unfortunately there's no solar 3.0 synergy there, so we can't really take advantage of any aspects or fragments for that. Solar kills in general will restore some of the barricade energy, so a solar subclass will certainly work in some way, but I'd still personally prefer void for the overshields. In terms of mods, i definitely run 100 resilience for the fastest cooldown, and then add a double utility kickstart on a stasis class item. Utility kickstart grants a nice chunk of barricade energy back as soon as you cast it, so if you have nothing 
nothing else, you should have these two and you'll be able to cast a barrier just about whenever you want. Both the 100 resilience and utility kickstarts make for a fast cooldown passively. Now if you want to actively feed back into your barricade regen, you could certainly run void arms and do either bolstering detonation or focusing strike so that either damage with your grenade or melee returns some barricade energy. Whichever you prefer is fine, although focusing strike could work well with echo of leeching to get health regeneration whenever you get a melee kill. This kind of depends on your playstyle. Lastly, any solar weapon kill will grant some barricade energy from the exotic perk. So if you use dead messenger, switch it to solar so you can take advantage of that. And also because of the change to the fundamentals trait on that weapon, you'll be able to reload really fast, which is actually pretty nice for follow-up shots. Otherwise, if you don't want to use dead messenger because it's going to get nerfed in six weeks, like I mentioned, there's explosive personality or really anything that you're comfortable with in that slot. Now, before we wrap up, I just want to do a quick TLDR of the good and bad about this build or kind of just exotic, really. Here's the good. Kepri's Horn is a unique and unexpected option that you can use to carefully surprise your enemies and prime them down to one shot before you even exchange fire. It can also be an effective counter for an aggressive team that's shotgun rushing or kind of dancing around with fusions. Bait your enemy and you'll have an advantage that they'll never see coming. Here's the bad. It's totally useless out in the open. Don't do it. Don't get caught out in the open, and that's honestly just a good rule generally. It's also easily evaded by people who take to the air a lot and does depend a lot on the map. Really wide open maps like Shores of Time or Altar of Flame are not kind to this build and offer a lot fewer opportunities that you can take advantage of the solar wave from your barricade. Know your enemy, know the map, and then lastly, control the build and don't let it control you. Don't ape into a lane and throw it on your shield and expect something good to happen. Keep it as a tool in your set, as an option that you can use to bait your opponent into a mistake and outsmart them so they never even have a chance. Dim link will be in the description if you want to check it out. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and maybe share it with your friends too. Share some of the chaos, and if you want to see more Destiny videos just like this one, subscribe and you will not be disappointed. Catch you guys next time.